You too, man. What's up, man? This is your guy, Manny. And welcome to the Talking Sports with Manny YouTube channel. Um, hope you guys are doing well. If you're new to the channel, please like, please subscribe. Please turn on the notification bell so that way you get content as I drop it. So today, man, we're going to talk Washington football. We're going to talk the Washington football tight end room. Also, Marcus Ball has been released from the Washington football team. A little bit about Marcus Ball, man. You know, he, he's been in the league for just a little bit. Hasn't really played too much um, in his college career. He had 52 receptions, 573 yards. Coming into the NFL as an undrafted free agent, you were probably thinking, hey, you know, maybe this guy is going to come in and maybe do some, do some damage. Because when you look at his measurables, he's 6'4". You know what I'm saying? So he's that prototypical type of tight end that you need in the NFL. Played at, played at um, Ohio State. Also played at Carolina, then came to Washington. He made the 53-man roster last year, and this year he has been released. And I'm going to kind of talk more so what this means for the football team. Um, this guy only had, like, I think one reception for two yards last year. He has done absolutely nothing for the football team. And we are starving for a tight end. We're starving for a tight end room. We're starving for a tight end group. And I'm going to go through – the current tight end situation and what this possibly means. I think that we're going to be adding another tight end. We're going to be adding somebody who's a veteran, somebody who's already proven. But really, when you look at it, who's really out there in the free agent market? So let's look at what the uh, what the current tight end group looks like. You got Logan Thomas, who's at age 29 right now. Okay, He's going to be a free agent next year. So next year, you're, you're looking at a tight end that's 30 years old, right? They're probably going to bring back Logan Thomas. You need a Logan Thomas because you don't really have anything on this roster. Logan Thomas had 100 or has 107 receptions and 987 yards for his career and eight touchdowns for his career. Now, last year he had 72 receptions of his 107 receptions for, for his career. So let that sink in. Last year was the first year that Logan Thomas has actually come in and given you something, right? Now, his eight touchdowns for his, for, for his career, six of those came last year, okay? His, uh, he has 978 yards for, for his career, and 670 of those came last year. So what does that really tell you about Logan Thomas? He does not have a lot of experience at – the tight end position, but guess what? He's the most polished tight end that we have on the roster. So he's a lot to make the team, right? Now you got John Bates. We just drafted this guy in the fourth round. A lot of a, a guy that a lot of you guys don't like. A lot of you guys didn't like the draft pick, but already on the roster, he's the best blocking tight end. He's a better blocker than Logan Thomas, believe it or not. All right. So he has zero reception, zero yards in the NFL. Then we move on to Dylan Cantrell. He was a sixth round pick in 2018. We signed this guy and he has zero yards, zero receptions, zero anything in the NFL. All right, moving on. We have Tamaric Hemingway. He was on a roster last year. Um, this guy has one career catch for 10 yards. Woo! We're moving on. You got Simmons Reyes, who has never played in the, in the NFL. He's a project. Matter of fact, he's never played the tight end position. So he's somebody that you're going to be grooming. So he can be practice squad. He can be 53. But if you're going to keep a Simmons Reyes with a John Ball and Logan Thomas, that tight end group is worse than it was last year, so to speak. You can make fun of Jeremy Sprinkle all you want. You can say that Jeremy Sprinkle sucks, but guess what? One thing that Jeremy Sprinkle has is experience, and that's something that neither John Bates or Simmons Reyes have. Now, of course, both are arguably more talented than Jeremy Sprinkle, but ooh, this tight end room is looking pretty rough. Then you go to Tyrone Swoops, okay? Two career receptions for 28 yards. Then you move on to Dion Yelder. We just signed this guy last week more as a camp body to come in and compete. I see the team possibly keeping maybe four tight ends just because we're so young at the position outside of Logan Thomas. So I can see a possibility where we keep four tight ends. And if we're going to be keeping four, that means, I mean, Dion Yelder, 
10 receptions for 86 yards. So <laughs> outside of Logan Thomas and John Bates, and maybe Reyes, it, how, depending on how the team feels about him, maybe Deion Yelder is the third best tight end right now by default. 10 receptions for 86 yards. So this is a tight end group. This is what we have to work with as of right now. I'm pretty sure that the football team is going to sign another tight end that's notable, that has done some things, that's experienced, that can help this group out. And when that happens, I'll be dropping a breaking news video. But for now, just wanted to come on here and talk about Marcus Ball. I actually thought I had more statistics for Marcus Ball, but when I look at what he's done, you know, being undrafted, getting into the uh, NFL uh, with the Raiders, and then you know, just kind of bouncing around to like to the to the uh, to the um, American no to the Alliance of American Football League, and then going to the Carolina Panthers and ending up on Washington. Great story, but it just didn't pan out. Um, he had pretty much all the all the tools to be a really good uh, tight end but it just didn't work out it just didn't work out he's just another guy he's a jag he's a super jag a super another just another guy so tight end room is looking crazy because i thought that marcus ball was probably going to make the team and kind of help because when you remove a marcus ball who has some kind of experience and you know you have these rookies and these guys that have never played a position it's going to be a really, really rough one. And what happens, God forbid, if Logan Thomas gets hurt? So my prediction is that the Washington football team is going to sign a notable veteran, one that's been around the league for a while, maybe a five- to seven-year veteran, who's going to come in, produce, and help this tight end position group. Once again, guys, this is your guy, Manny. Thanks so much for listening to another little segment of the Back Row Redskins show. This is the Talking Sports with Manny YouTube channel. Please like, subscribe, share. And in the comment section, let me know what you guys think of this tight end room. Let me know what you guys think could happen. Do you see us adding somebody else? Do you see us uh, uh, trading for a tight end? I mean, Zach Ertz is still out there. I'm pretty sure that there's some tight ends out there that we can possibly trade for. Um, or do you guys just feel comfortable rolling into the season with Logan Thomas, Bates, and Reyes? <laughs> let me know. All right, man, y'all be blessed.